Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 4.2, Trigonometric Functions, the Unit Circle. In section 4.2, perhaps the most critical thing for students to understand is the unit circle. And what be better way to get them to do that than to build it, perhaps from scratch. So I'm joined by Gabe and Brittany, and we're going to walk you through how we would actually kind of take students through the process of building the coordinates that go along the unit circle right from zero. Right? Okay. So let's do that. So what we'll do is we'll call on their knowledge of special right triangles from geometry. Okay. All right. And what I think is a good idea is to have your students um, look at a blank unit circle, preferably with perhaps some lines where 30 and 45 and 60 and those multiples would be. Mm -hmm. um, and that way we can kind of draw the, the appropriate triangles. So I think we'll start at 30. So we'll start at the 30 degree angle. And what we'll do is we'll go to the spot on the circle where the radius intersects the circle at that coordinate. And we're going to drop down a line segment to create a right angle. And so what we're in essence doing is we're creating a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We'll label it as such. So the big question students ask is why do they call it the unit circle? And that would be because the radius of the circle is one unit. So what we'll do here is we'll actually take advantage of that. And if we look carefully, the radius of this circle actually corresponds to the hypotenuse of our triangle. So we will mm -hmm. label that one. So now what we want to do is we want to have them uh, call upon those relationships in the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so what I may even do on the board is I might write down, okay, I may even write the triangle and I might say, okay, well, what do we equate this one to be? What do we say the hypotenuse is equal to in, in what expression? And, you know, we say that that's 2s, right? Okay. And that the side length is opposite 30 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would do for them is I would say, okay, well, then if we know that, isn't it logical to say that 1 must equal 2s, mm -hmm. right? And I have them solve that. And so then they say, okay, well, so side, the side length equals 1 half. So here's the critical question. I say, well, where do I place that 1 half? Where does that 1 half belong? Mm -hmm. And I want somebody to say, well, that would belong, in this case, opposite the 30 degree side. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to place it on that side of the triangle, call that 1 half. Then I'll say to them, all right, well, what about the remaining side? How do we find that one? And they'll say, well, the relationship uh, or the expression for the 60 degree side would be radical 3 times s. So I'll say, all right, well, if we know s is a half, then we can just do radical 3 times 1 half. But it looks kind of messy. You know? So I say, is there a better way to express that? And so you know, if we multiply the fraction, we say, all right, well, that's radical 3 over 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Let's label the side opposite 60 degrees as radical 3 over 2. Okay, now, do you have to start like this? No. You could start with the 45 degree angles, which we'll do in a second. You could even start with the 60 degree angle first, you know, and just put that angle in, in you know, towards the origin, and that's okay. You know, it doesn't really matter where you start. I just thought it was logical to start at the first point here. Mm -hmm. So now that they do that, here's the big question. How does it all tie in, right? Yeah. I say, well, look carefully. That coordinate, that point that we have there, that has coordinates x, y. But if you look carefully, if you look along the triangle, along the x-axis, right, it only goes so far. It actually matches up with that coordinate. So what must our x-coordinate be then? Radical 3 over 2, right? So I say, all right, let's label that. Let's actually put the coordinate radical 3 over 2 down. And then hopefully they see at this point, well, then that must mean that the, the y-coordinate is 1 half. Is 1 half. Perfect. Right? So we pause for a minute, and I say, you know, as a class, do you think that we need to draw three more triangles of this size? And, and invariably, the answer is really no, because if we, if we look carefully at the symmetry and the patterns, then that must mean that this triangle is going to occur somewhere else, right? So I, maybe I'll point their attention to the second or the third quadrant, or it doesn't really matter. Maybe even the fourth quadrant is a good one, and say, well, what would happen if we drew this triangle, in essence, upside down in the fourth quadrant? And, and the y value of the point would be negative. That's it, right. So I just yeah. want them to make that connection that all that's happening is that the, the value is changing from positive to negative, perhaps. That's it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I let them go around the circle now, and I have them label the coordinates of 150 degrees, 210 degrees, mm -hmm. and then 330 degrees, consistent with this triangle that we've drawn, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. If I feel it's necessary, I, I will go through the other, third, the other portion and, and go to the 60 degree, mm -hmm. but... I actually don't find it necessary too much because I ask them the simple leading question. I say, you know, can you tell me what might happen 
if we redraw this triangle now and we just change the location of the 30 and the 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, what do you want? You want a student to say, well, well wouldn't the coordinates basically just you know, switch? And mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go around the, the, the circle again. Okay, so then I, I do think I would walk them through the 45, 4590 case. Um, yeah. We don't have to do it here, but I think I would draw the 45, 45, 90 triangle. I would get them to think about it in the same way, talk about the expressions as, as radical two, and, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing, bring it in, into it, and say, all right, let's go solve for those side lengths, let's plot the coordinates, and let's go around the triangle, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, what do you guys like to tell your students to, or try and have them pick up on mm -hmm. as you're doing this? Um, something that I like to point out as we're working through activities like this is maybe, maybe even as we're just walking through the first quadrant, if we start at the first point on the x-axis, so where okay. the circle intersects the x-axis, let's just look at the y values okay. first. So the y value at that point would be zero. Right. Then as we go up 30 degrees, our next y value would be one half. Okay. As we go up to 45 degrees, the y value would be square root of two divided by two, square root of three divided by two, and then finally one. Right, okay. And that's something that I'm sort <laughs> so of pointing out to my students. The, the y values are increasing <laughs> right. as the angle increases. But then once you get past 90 degrees, your y values start decreasing. Okay. And I can have a similar conversation about the x values of right. each of these points. Brittany, how about you? What do you like to students to see as they're building this here? I like them to see that the x value ranges from 1 to negative 1, okay. and same with the y values. Good. That Love way it. we can get into discussions of domain and range. Love it. Love it. And you know, we can also, we can also talk to them about how, you know, once we get past 360, you know, it doesn't <laughs> stop there. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, if we, were to, if we were to have to evaluate some type of an angle bigger than 365, 40, or whatever mm -hmm. might have you, then, then we can still kind of uh, introduce, or at least tease the idea of a periodic yeah. function. Yeah. And there's nothing stopping us from starting at zero degrees and moving and down going, Right, and going degrees. at a negative angle, right. And I think <laughs> that these are all great points that you're going to want to bring up with your student for sure. Yeah. I think one of the other things we're going to have to do now is define the, the six trigonometric functions, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. we do that with them, we walk them through it, and then we, we actually might even say, you know, get into it a little bit in the next section. I don't want to uh, go too far, but mm -hmm. we'll get into the right triangle idea of opposite and hypotenuse and that kind of thing. And that's yeah. something they may yeah. have already seen in geometry also. Right, and you know, so, yeah. so we're hopefully calling on prior knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of dusting it off a little bit. I think the one thing we want to leave them with, though, is the idea of which one of these coordinates is cosine and which one's sine. Right? And yeah. now, Brittany, you have a good way of helping students remember that, right? Yeah, so thinking about the alphabet, okay. uh, sine starts with an S, right. and cosine starts with a C. Right. So, and X be goes before Y, right. C be go come goes before right. S. So, yeah, so. That's <laughs> just stay with the, stay with the yeah. alphabet, and you're, you're going to be fine, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think, you know, there's a lot you can do with this section. You can get into even and odd properties or other things you can mm -hmm. talk about. But I think if students have a, a very solid foundation with the unit circle. That's going to set them up for much success later on, especially mm -hmm. if you're talking about angles that aren't common mm -hmm. and aren't on the unit circle, right? I mean, yeah. 87 degrees is out there, right? Yeah. I mean, That's another <laughs> thing you don't want students to get confused about and right. think, oh, here's a unit circle, now how do I find sine of 87 degrees? Right. Oh, wait, it's it doesn't exist. It's, it's not, not there. there. It's not there. there. No value, yeah. right. <laughs> right. Or even the idea that all, all the functions are defined at every mm -hmm. value, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, I, th I find sometimes what gets lost in classes, so we have all these triangles and stuff, but what about just something simple like 90 degrees? You know, so now we didn't draw yeah. a triangle there. You know, how do you define? But Brittany, like you said before, I want them to be able to look at that and say, oh, okay, well, so cosine of 90, that's the x coordinate, that's zero. Mm -hmm. And I think if we, if we put all that together, it really sets them up for a success. Mm -hmm. yes. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you and that you find much success in section 4.2.